an individual contacted me and told me to to please clean up the code and then um, try and test for the update method where arguments are missing that there's something wrong somewhere and I should print out the appropriate messages for when ID is missing or this or that should okay so that's the reason I'm making this video and then at the same time I know that if I should check I know that um, Pi codes uh, this is going to <laughs> give me a lot of errors because I wasn't checking there too many blank lines so um, so what I'm going to do is <coughs> okay one more thing test so I'm going to run this test and let's see something again Okay. Here we see that I'm having six failures, and this failures is all started from. Let's see, line eight forty-seven, and it's all test update. Line eight forty-seven. It's 47 so it's from here um, so the thing is um I wasn't printing out all of these error messages when insta ID instance is missing for for update and so on so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to clean up the code like if I should run this I'm going to get Okay, this past I did missing the error. I did miss it's supposed to print out I did missing but it didn't print. So that's what I'm going to be checking. Um, so I think so first I I use try and accept to try and catch errors if something goes wrong. Same thing for this part. So what I'm going to do here is um I'm going to first check because all this is coming from update. So I'm going to first say um, if there is no incoming class name then I'm going to print class name missing and then after printing it I will return so you know we are having No, we are having six failures. So now that I've covered for this class name missing, let's run this again. See? Now we have five failures. So, so I have to print out a message for where instance ID is missing, value is missing, etc. And then after that, I'm going to 
deal with um, Baiko style. So, um, going to come back here to the split curly braces. So, this is where I'm going to handle where ID is missing and etc. Let me check out this. So, um, for me to do this, I have to check out this try block so that instead of catching the, all the exceptions at the same time, I'll decide what I want to do there. So I'm going to say if, if commands, then I'm going to say Try that is in a case where ID the ID is missing, so I want to catch whatever exception. If there's no ID, so if there's no ID, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return an empty string. I'm going to return an empty string because if when I return an empty string and then when these um when the the top is returned to the default method and the default method if it passes it to the update method the update method so the what the update method will do is come here and check what is this here so it's going to check if the commands is less than two so since all those are empty strings which means it's less than two so it's going to print instance id missing so let me get back to this i think i'll just do it and then explain it so if there's no ID, I'm going to we're going to return in a tuple of two empty strings, and then if there's an ID present, but there is no attribute name. So I'm going to return the ID, and then an empty string. Again, so if if the attribute name is present but the attribute value there's nothing in the attribute value, I'm going to return the ID and just the attribute name. So what's going to happen is here if I return if the ID is empty then I'll turn two, two empty strings so the update method is going to say invalid or ID missing something like that let me see instance ID missing so now if ID is returned but attribute name which means attribute name or attribute value is is not present it's going to return um, attribute name missing then if the id is present attribute name is present but there is no attribute value it's going to return value missing so let's run this see if we should take out this result Yeah, so 
where we have we handled this part so next thing we are going to be doing is um, um again i need to reduce the lines of code you know that um, where is it so when we call this function and pass it this incoming extra argument we know that we are expecting a, a tuple and we are going to unpack unpack them into these two variables to these two variables object id and act dictionary so here we are checking if the the act the act date which you know we, we are expecting either a string or dictionary so here we're checking if it's a string we do this and pass it here if it's a if it's a dictionary and then we also pass it here so what i want to do is to i'm going to remove this check I'll remove this check and then i'll remove this part all of it and then another thing i'll do is um there's no need to rename this check out this part bring this down take this out and replace it with this act dictionary because why i'm doing this is that So we know we are expecting either a dictionary or a string. So if it's a if it comes as a string, then or if it comes as a dictionary, what's going to happen is uh, since these are uh, uh, default method, what it's doing is just to to just in case of um, um, any syntax error or any if the in the command line the format we enter is uh, well is an unknown syntax or invalid so in this default method we just reformat it and then create a method call and send it back to that method so since we are expecting an additionary or a string if it comes into this method dictionary what's going to happen is this default method we will send it back to this um, update method now inside this update method this update method is going to handle the case where is a dictionary so if it's a dictionary is going to do all this and then set the attributes so there's really no need for us to be also doing the same thing inside here just to be increasing the lines of code so that's why I've removed that part. So, so in our default method, I've renamed, I've renamed this um, incoming class name to class name, and then incoming method to um, CMD method, which is command method, and eag as is the incoming extra argument to extra eag. So I've reduced all of this i believe i did a good job cleaning this up so i ended up in 293 lines of code and what else let me see okay so now if i should run pico style okay and declare and if i should run this test okay. so for the for the person that asked me to to clean up my code and make sure um all of my tests are passing so there it is i hope you are happy now